Shalom. Welcome to Through the Eyes of the Elder Discussion Series. We're glad you could join us here today. Well, we're embarking on chapter two of Ephesians about the end time Malchizedian priesthood, and we're going to touch on something today that will kind of refine and define a little bit more about what we're trying to get across that we're trying to extract out of this book so it makes more sense for those of you out there uh, who maybe haven't seen this perspective in a teaching before. You know, I'm sure that it, as a believer in Yeshua, Jesus, that if you look back in your past life, when you were in the Babylonian system, you had a lot of things going on in your life that prob were very dysfunctional. You probably um, didn't recognize character flaws, weaknesses, things like that that are going on in your life that were creating a lot of kind of problems in your life. Well, once you became a believer and accepted Yeshua, Jesus, as your Messiah, that's the starting point. And at the, if you've been at this for a little while, I'm sure if you've been led by the Spirit, which hopefully you have, you've been shown over a period of time character flaws that you have or weaknesses in the armor that Yahweh has provided for you that you are not utilizing properly. And the devil's able to come in and he's able to penetrate weak spots inside that armor and afflict you and cause you. It could be finances, it could be relationships, it could be um, um, any kind. It could be health, it could be anything. We all suffer to some degree. I'm not saying any of us are perfect about this, but the fact of the matter is we do have weaknesses, and it's our responsibility for us to understand what those weaknesses are, pray about it fast if you have to, and be able to increase the strength of the armor that you have so that the devil can't get a hold of you and run roughshod all around you spiritually so you can become more effective for the kingdom. Well, what, what I'm leading up to is, is that dis, disobedience weakens our armor. And so today we're going to start taking a look at some things that are, are going on in our lives and in chapter two that creates this weakness in our armor. And this Babylonian system that we've come out of has a process. Yahweh has a method to his madness, and he does have a process. And that process we're going to ex we're going to examine today and hope that you can see it from a different perspective that might make more sense as to why maybe you're stuck in a position where it seems like there's no way out and you can't figure out why certain things are happening to you. So I think this is going to be a surprise for many people. I hope or we hope that you don't become offended by what we say, but what we're going to show is a fact. And at some point, we're all going to have to get in alignment with one protocol, one system that Messiah Yahshua is trying to get us all into. I don't even think I want to use the word try. I'm uh, just saying right now, this is what he's doing. And it's a progressive movement. And until we all come to the fullness of Messiah, and uh, we'll examine some of those things as we go along. So I want to Thank my brother Anthony for joining with me again here today. Uh, we're tackling this book in chapter two now, and um, it's my hope that this will broaden the eyes of the hearers, you know, even to a greater degree than what we did in, in chapter one. And um, the point is that you could see your calling going to another kind of a level, mm -hmm. you know? These systems of religions that have uh, that we have today have held everybody under a certain narrative. And so the point here is that we want people to break out of that narrative mm -hmm. and see something beyond what they've ever been told so that they can understand their identity better than what they understood before. Mm -hmm. And um, I know for me, it was uh, quite an awakening to realize the significance of this uh, in time Melchizedian priesthood. And um, even if you are a person that doesn't get called to that level, because not all of us are, and I'm not saying one is better than the other, that's not our point. Mm -hmm. I don't want anybody to, to be disparaged. 
<laughs> the key is to be able to get into the kingdom, to put on this glorified body. Yeah. So whether you're a, a guest at the wedding feast or you're part of the bride or you're part of the Malchizedian priesthood, the 144,000, the sons of Elohim, um, the apostles had their share. Or that's set in the foundation now. Uh, it doesn't matter where you are. If Yahweh has deemed that that's what he's called you to be, take comfort in that. But that doesn't mean you still shouldn't strive to do as much as you can with the calling that you've gotten, because you're only going to get it once. And um, so that's my perspective as I see this chapter here today. And uh, we're going to get into some interesting things, and I hope people will find it interesting as we have. Mm -hmm. So I'll turn it over to you and give yourself the uh, any opinions you might have. Uh, well, praise Yahweh. It's it's always in a pattern with me uh, how we establish in the on the first page that we talked about as a foundation, and for me in reading the second page here, it it just lays upon this foundation of he gave me this analogy how you get up in the morning and you um look in the mirror. And you get everything right with you and you say, OK, everything's perfect. I'm ready to go out into the world and perform my task. But you go out into the world and you see the other images that's in the world. And straight away, you forget about the image you had on and you put on the images of your surroundings or your environment. Yahweh didn't. It's not raising us up to be like that he's raising us up regardless of what environment you have remember who you are but if we haven't gotten the knowledge of who we are in the messiah then surely it's going to be easy for us to go out there and put on other images and forget who we are who we represent and so for me as we turn to this page it's just um reflecting more on the journey when he first found me, you know, and, and heard my cry. So I'm just uh, an open vessel, an empty vessel for him to pour into more and more, just to refresh me, replenish me as a constant reminder who it is I was created to be in Messiah. Baruch Hashem. Um, during the week when we were talking, mm -hmm. you kept repeating over and over again um, out of the first one we did, chapter one, you kept mentioning, I believe you were saying the word process. Mm -hmm. You kept, and you didn't quite, you said you couldn't quite figure out, at least at that time, um, what does that really mean? Right. You know? Right. And it's interesting because this morning as I'm kind of going through this chapter two uh, that we're going to cover, I realized what Abba Father had me put in here is a process. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know if that speaks to the word process that you got, but as we go through this, we're going to find there's a process, there's a protocol. And so uh, I say, let's just go ahead and jump into this. Yes. Um, so this is uh, Ephesians chapter 2, uh, verse 1. And um, the title of this is going to be the spirit of disobedience weakens your armor. Mm -hmm. um, none of us likes to feel weak, and yet it happens to us. Yes. And sometimes we don't know why we're weak. Mm -hmm. I know I've struggled with things for years that I still am trying to figure out and get an answer to as to why does this keep happening to me, mm -hmm. you know? And I know there's a cause, and you always want to be able to get to that cause. So that's kind of the exercise for today. So let's read in verse one, it says, and you, he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins. Verse two, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince in first rank of power, that is superhuman delegated influence of the air, the spirit of a demon who now works in the sons of disobedience of rebellious unbelief. Mm -hmm among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust, a longing for what is forbidden of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh 
of the mind and were by nature from a natural lineal descent children of wrath just as the others mm -hmm. and so that really speaks a lot there and you know that kind of covers a little bit of what we opened with you know you were saying that when you go out into the world it's not your intent to be caught up into things but this world has a, such a strong pull mm -hmm. that you find that you know um you wind up forgetting quickly what yahweh spoke to you in the morning <laughs> and you get in line with this world yeah so uh we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take a look at a summary of this now we're gonna mm -hmm. um we're going to be able to speak into some of these verses and what's really going on. So um, one of the points that Shaul is bringing out is it is by Yahweh's grace that redeemed them from their sins and made them alive. This mm -hmm. is something we can never forget. We all, that's, that's foundational. You know, we can never forget that. Uh, another point is Shaul reminds them of their past sins that were forgiven. Another point is Shaul tells them the source of what made them sinners. And also this other point is ignorance of his laws keeps you in bondage to sin. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think right there is foundational to the rest of what we're going to talk about. Yes. And um, any, you have any comments you want to make in it? Nope. No, or mm -hmm. I, I thought you'd be out of the gate already. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, let's go ahead and let's move on. So in reference to this last point about ignorance to the law, 1 John 3, 4 says, Whoever commits by transgressing the law, which is sin, mm -hmm. also commits lawlessness, which is the violation of the law. And sin is lawlessness and unrighteousness. That is just so important. Mm -hmm. Because with every everybody in, let's say, Christianity, we talked about this last time, they'll keep the last six commandments, but they don't want to keep the first four. Well, then... By ignoring the, fir the first four, you're not only uh, ignoring the first and great commandment, which mm -hmm. is a commission, you know, you can't put on righteousness from those things that you reject. Mm -hmm. So that leaves a hole in your armor mm -hmm. because we have the breastplate of righteousness, which is Yahshua HaMashiach. And so what you're doing is you're diminishing that breastplate. So let's say that breastplate is this big. Right. Mm -hmm. This is what comes to me. And let's just keep it simple. The Ten Commandments. So if you keep the first, the last six, but you won't keep the first four, then that plate is 40 percent smaller than it should be because you've taken away four out of the ten. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So let's say your heart on this side is left vulnerable where the devil can attack you. You know, or your liver over here or your lungs or uh, whatever is in this particular area of the body, you're vulnerable. Right. And it's a willful vulnerableness because you have decided, uh-uh, not for me. Mm -hmm. But we're going to get into more and more interesting stuff as we go along to show how that's a flawed narrative that the church has taught. Mm -hmm. Listen, uh, we're not here to condemn anybody. Right. Yahweh's got this all planned out. So mm -hmm. I'm not worried about it. Whoever's going to come in is going to come in. Mm -hmm. Whoever isn't coming in isn't coming in. Mm -hmm. And we're going to show this process mm -hmm. as we get down a little bit further. But my point is, is that why would you want to limit what you could be? Mm -hmm. You could be something greater, but Yahweh or Yeshua gives you that opportunity. But if you choose not to sow everything, then you can't reap the benefits of what you were supposed to sow but chose not to mm -hmm. through unbelief. Mm -hmm. And if we're doing this out of unbelief, we're not seed of Abraham. Mm -hmm. Right? We're not children of we're not seed of Abraham, right. technically speaking. Yes. Uh anyway, that's my take on that. Yeah. Uh, just on the um foundation of your message, children of disobedience um weakens your um, armor. And I can think, you know, I was raised by my grandmother and little minor things that she had a rule, right? A law. But you just open that refrigerator and stand there and look. If <laughs> if you open it, you better know what you want out of it. I think I had one of those. You know, well. <laughs> and, and my goodness, the disobedience in us is just going to, in our thought, 
the rebel against that is just let me open it and see. I already know what's in the refrigerator. Y'all just want to make a choice, but it's going to take me a minute to see. Ah, uh, do I want the popsicle? <laughs> do I want a glass of chocolate milk? Mm. Uh, and you know, you 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 just going down the list of what's in the refrigerator, but you're standing there with the um, door open, yeah. and she sees it, right? And right away, come here. Get the switch. Oh, I'm going to beat this devil out of you. And I'm wondering what, you know, the disobedience weakened that protected mm -hmm. shield that obedi obeying that would have had on me because it weakened my armor. Now, now she got a right to come in mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good point. and tame the flesh. Yeah. And that's what life does for us. I, 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 I came up with a mind to be obedient. And that's the mind without Messiah. You want to try to do what's right. But we go out into the world and we put on what the children of disobedience to learn from that disobedience, you know. And when Yahweh comes in and reveals himself to us, he's showing us what manner of person we ought to be based on the person that he converted us from, you know? And so when I'm looking at the uh, scriptures you are presenting, it's like, if I don't believe sin is really sin, then I'm gonna minimize it and I'm gonna pick and choose which one is the most important sin I should not do. And the rest of them, I'm just, oh, should I keep that today? Uh, should I? neglect that one today and so we falls and it weakens us even more because we're not putting on the all of the commandments mm -hmm. we're just putting on peace just like you say now it leaves you vulnerable broken hearts mm -hmm. being deceived in relationships you know and we walk through this life not even counting that about loving your neighbor as yourself as one, you know, I got to treat you like I want to be treated. Mm -hmm. So if I don't and you don't uh, return that same um, treatment back to me, then our relationship is going to flow through there. Not mm -hmm. saying that we won't have disagreements, but that disagreement won't break us. It'll matter of fact, it'll bond us even more because we can reconcile. Right. Right. That's what I was getting just oh, okay. from that. All right. Um, okay, so we're going to go through verse 4 through 10 now, mm -hmm. and the narrative of these verses coming is the purpose of salvation, mm -hmm. okay? Um, and, well, I mean, the purpose of salvation is to save you from all those flaws yes. to, so that you can have that full armor mm -hmm. so you're not vulnerable. Mm -hmm. After all, we are representatives of the kingdom, mm -hmm. and we should not be seen as weak. Mm -hmm. And yet so many people are very weak. Mm -hmm. um, but it's all a growth process. So let, let's read verse 4. But Elohim, who is rich in mercy because of his great love and which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Hamashiach by grace you have been saved, and raised us up together and made us to sit, because of our association to him, together in heavenly places in Hamashiach, Yahshua. Verse 7, that in the ages, the Jewish messianic period to come, he might show exceeding riches of his grace and his divine influence on the heart in his kindness towards us in Hamashiach, Yahshua. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and not of yourselves, it is the gift from a sacrifice of Elohim. Mm -hmm. Not of works, lest anyone should boast, for we are his workmanship, created in Hamashiach Yahshua for good works. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Which Elohim prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So, you know, the, the narrative in the church for many years has been, you're not saved by works. Mm-hmm. 
Well, you can die from the works too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, but we'll get into a little bit more of that um, as we go along to reinforce that false narrative. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we're accused of trying to do works of the law. Mm -hmm. Well, we're not trying to do works of the law because a man has told us these are the laws that we got to we got to perform. Mm -hmm. We do these laws contrary to our carnal nature because Yahshua has written them on our heart and we do them because we love him. Mm -hmm. Just like a wife would be obedient to a husband and vice versa if you love the other partner. Yes. So it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. This is just a cheap excuse to get out of being responsible for your calling and doing the right thing and allowing yourself to be grafted into Israel. We'll get into a little bit more of that. You got mm -hmm. something you want to say in here? Uh, just the fact of the first v verse you read, uh, being dead in our sins and trespasses and being forgiven of them in spite in spite mm -hmm. you know because of his great love for us and i can reflect back i try to um be like personal in our discussions as it's a possibility that somebody may be able to identify and might give them a little strength to receive the grace of yahweh you know um gladly and understand what great love he has showed to us to give us the forgiveness in spite of the person that we we would we were um we had become and i can remember in relationships i would be so unfaithful and because of their love for me they would give me grace and forgive me for that transgression hmm. Yet I would go back and do it again. I wouldn't look at them as, man, this is a love that don't need to be stepped on. This is a love that don't need to be taken for granted. When they're doing good to me and they've done a good deed towards me, why would I repay them with the very thing that hurts them? And when we're looking at the Messiah, we don't see that. No. It hurts him no, with our disobedience, yeah, right. you know, it pains him. It pains Yahweh so much till he said, perhaps if I send my son to lay his life down for you and you see that your deeds has caused this great pain to someone, it may perhaps change you, you know. And so, like I'm saying, this story, this as we turn the pages, it really touches me deeply, you know, to continue to hold on to this um, salvation, hold on to this um, forgiveness or this grace, as they say, or this hold on to it with great um, care because it's so valuable what's been given to us or what's available for us in this world that you haven't fallen too far that his hand can't come and redeem you back in. And so it's just opening up wounds to see the healing process that he has already done in my life that I can continue to walk in this grace, but walk in it with the knowledge of knowing what it truly means to be loved by Yahweh. You know, you, you in the beginning, you said something that kind of struck me. Mm -hmm. imagine that you're a husband or a wife and we all have this and there's something you want to see from the other partner mm -hmm. that under normal circumstances shouldn't be difficult but for whatever reason that person either through their pride or their uh, bitterness or unforgiveness of things that may have happened in the past um, call it whatever you want, mm -hmm. will not of their own free will do that for you. Mm -hmm. And in a certain kind of way, it's a form of vindictiveness. I'm going to make you pay for 
what you would like me to do, and I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to give you that satisfaction. Mm -hmm. That's inherently evil. And it shows a disdain for your partner, which brings shame on the Messiah and his blood because he forgiven you, but you won't forgive the other one. Mm -hmm. Now, if a person refuses to bear fruits of repentance, that's a different discussion. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about when Christians say for, that I don't need to keep the first four commandments, which is the greatest mm -hmm. in Yahweh's eyes. The Messiah has got to be looking down at you and say, why do you hate me so much mm -hmm. that those four things that are a part of my character, you abhor so much that through your unbelief and your rebellion, we read the scripture about children of the wrath. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, these things have to be worked out of all of us. Mm -hmm. We all, at some level, have some degree of this. Mm -hmm. But I'm honing in on Christianity because this is what they teach, and this is what we're going to kind of go through a little bit today. Mm -hmm. And so it's a very, very dangerous position to take when you decide, I like this part of the Messiah, but that part of the Messiah, what he stands for in the marriage contract, I ain't getting in line with them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this is going to make more sense as we go along. So one of Paul's points is he reasserts that it's the grace that sustains us as righteousness and not works. Mm -hmm. And that's so true. You can't mm -hmm. rely on your works. This is a, a complicated subject because it twists people's minds into a pretzel. Mm -hmm. Because what are you saying? You're double talking. On one hand, you're saying you're not saved by works, but then you're saying you're saved by works. Well, Paul said it. Yes. It's a matter of, again, a process, mm -hmm. like you said. It's a protocol that you have to follow, and you have to get them in their right order. Righteousness comes first. You can't do the works of Yahweh's law and perform them and have them fulfilled in your life if you don't first have the righteousness of Yeshua. Right. If you're trying to do the works first and not disregard the righteousness, well, then you're just doing your own law. Exactly. The way you see it. Uh-huh. And Paul tells us not of the righteousness of the law, which we do, Amen. but the righteousness that's in Messiah. Exactly. And um, that's where people, um, like you said, they um, stumble because they're because we're telling them to keep the commandments they're assuming that we're saying the commandments are the one that save you no there's no works that we can do the messiah did the works for us we just being obedient for him having to come to do the works because of our disobedience and if his spirit who did that is inside of us and he's living inside of us mm -hmm. why are we going no 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 right Exactly. That should be very troublesome mm -hmm. to people who are doing that. And mm -hmm. the vast majority do. Yes. That's uh, the, I'm sorry, you want to say something? That's the deception yeah, it that's is been planted yeah. into that carnal nature that we refuse to see. Mm -hmm. We forgot it when we looked in the mirror that we have put off that carnal person. And now we have an inward person that's living in us now that's going to give a different picture of what they're seeing because I saw who it was that was in the mirror. So when I go out there, I can't put on any other image because that's not the image that's living in me. And it's so easy naturally to forget that. Mm. But we can claim we have all of his gifts. We can came, claim oh, we have the, yes. the Ruach, the yeah. Holy Spirit. Oh, yeah. You know, we yeah. can claim all of that. Mm. But when we go out into the world, they don't see that. No, the devil says, ha, 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 wait till I pull this stunt on you. We're going to find out just how weak you really are. Yeah, I'm, you know? I got to be the same person around everybody. Yeah. I'm around people who call yeah. themselves preachers all the time, but they don't look at me as having the spirit of Messiah living in me, mm. uh, walking in the word of Yahweh. They look at me like I'm just a regular street person. And so they can speak anything or try to talk any kind of subject around me. I don't talk like that. 
I don't hold those conversations. Mm -hmm. I'm not the one to do it. But then when one who they uh, know to be a so-called preacher in this world comes in, immediately the conversation switches. Now they want to talk spiritual things. Mm -hmm. Nonsense. You got to be the same person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, another point he's making is our re regenerated state now allows us to sit in high places of great influence. Thank you, Abba. So in a time of need, you can approach the throne of grace boldly mm -hmm. and make your petition and you've got clout behind you. You can walk with confidence now mm -hmm. knowing who mm -hmm. you are. Mm -hmm. Pride. You can walk prideful in being who you are, not being ashamed, yeah, right, you know. Right. Paul say, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Yeshua, mm -hmm. for it's the power of Yahweh to this salvation that I'm walking in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I can't be ashamed at the power and the authority that has been given to me to walk in his commandments, to keep his law. Right. I can't be ashamed of that. You can't tell me that don't matter. Especially when you're outnumbered by so many people around you who don't believe that. Exactly. So, yeah. Another point he's trying to make is his forgiveness is supposed to lead us to the knowledge of sin and repentance. Mm. Yet, sadly, today, that is not the case. No. It doesn't lead them. So if the Spirit is not leading you to understand what sin is and then be granted the ability to repent, what Spirit is leading you? Uh, John, may I don't have a permission to say it, so but I'm gonna say it, and she's gonna see it. Um, <laughs> oh, she was having trouble. this um conversation with her sister about striving for perfection, mm -hmm. and um, her sister says, "Well, some are babes, so they're gonna like it's." That's their excuse to sin anyway because they're babes. Mm -hmm. And so they can't get the meat. The commandments are not the meat. It is the milk to nourish you up in this oh, world. Yeah, that's true. You know? And yet they can't see it. So they make excuses to reject um the the sacrifice and say, I'm covered by the blood. Uh I'm under grace. And they use that as their crutch to be weak. You can do that, yes. Yes. And so it's it's I'm just saying that based on you saying his 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 forgiveness spared us from suffering what he had to suffer, and yet it's not awakening us to walk in obedience. That's the deceptiveness of sin. Yes. It tricked you into thinking you can use that crutch. Yes. And uh, you can't even recognize that you you got that crutch that it was created for you. <laughs> At least a lot of people don't. I think deep down some people really do know, but I, I'm going to play that card because that's the only one I got. Yeah, because he died for me. Yeah, right. I, I'm covered. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Once saved, always saved. Mm -hmm. Ain't nothing I can do to mess it up. Right. Uh, it ain't nothing I need to do. It doesn't even make sense, John. No, it don't make sense. When you're talking about there's nothing you need to do. Well, why you get angry at me? Mm -hmm. Why do we quarrel with one another? If it's nothing that they can do wrong in Yahweh's eyes, how can they do anything wrong in my eyes? Mm -hmm. How can we get angry with one another if once we're saved, there's nothing else we can do that's going to be wrong, that's going to make us lose this salvation? Well, that's like I said the last time, you know, that's what the serpent told Eve. Yes. Surely you're not going to die. Right. <laughs> and they, they still got that doctrine today. Yes, yes. Flip the pages, brother. This is a good one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Another point he's trying to make is his forgiveness spared us of the death penalty. Mm -hmm. the transgression against the law, the penalty of the law is death. Yes. Um. Another point he's making is both Jew and Gentile are supposed to be co-heirs. Mm-hmm. It's not just for the Jews, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and technically speaking, Israel, because right, the Jews right. are not the Jews aren't Israel. They're right, part of Israel. Right. Right. Uh, last point here. Yeshua uh, would demonstrate his exceeding riches in us by allowing us to be obedient. See, that's the key. You can't be obedient on your own. Mm -mm. 
it has to be granted to you from the Father mm -hmm. to be able to do it. Mm -hmm. And there are some people that just, no matter how much they try, not going to be able to do it. Look at Judas. He tried to repent of what he did. And he died. And Yahweh in Psalm 109 said he was angry with him mm -hmm. because he tried to repent. That made him furious. Mm -hmm. I think that's very uh, fascinating. Uh, you got something yeah, to say? Uh, yeah, because we all get opportunities. Judas had an opportunity not to do what he wanted to do. He was warned. It'll be better if you hung a milestone mm -hmm. around your neck than jump into the deepest part of the ocean mm -hmm. than what you're about to do. But that spirit of disobedience had entered in already, so it wasn't nothing to do. So you should say, go do what you got to do. Do it fast. Right. Huh? Let's get it over get with. It over. Stop, stop going through uh -huh. all this agony. Right, right. Go ahead, because it's already in you to do it, right. you know? And that's what sin does to us. When it's entered into your heart, it's hard to get rid of it. You're going to perform that thing. And it shows us once we go and do that act, it was in our hearts to do it. And after you've done it, you get this feeling of guilt. Mm -hmm. So you try to cover it up, uh, appease it in some kind of way, you know. And so instead of allowing yourself to be sensitive that the spirit of Yahweh is grieved mm -hmm. and it's trying it's in one hand, it's speaking to you about what you did to convict you so you can repent. But if not, it begins to move away from you. Yes. Just like a wife that's been offended, you know, she'll give you the cold shoulder, you know, don't bother me. I don't want to see your face for a while, you know, you're in trouble, you're in the doghouse, you know. <laughs> exactly. It's like at the end of the day, John, this is this is what works for me. And I hope it can work for everybody. He suffered. He died mm -hmm. because of something I was doing. I need to find out what it was but if i reject the commandments i'll never know what it was because the commandments yeah, is yeah. telling us right. why he came mm -hmm. because of sin mm -hmm. and the commandments came because of sin right or the law however you want to put it that's interesting because let's say there's a particular commandment that you don't want to keep mm -hmm. you abhor it you reject it right but in your life something is happening to you over and over again, habitually, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That you're getting consequences for. You don't understand why you're getting those consequences. But the reason why you're getting those consequences is because this one commandment that you refuse to accept and be obedient to cannot teach you through the Spirit why this has come upon you all these times. Mm -hmm. You have shut yourself off from knowledge understanding and wisdom in that area of your life. Mm -hmm. So you're doing yourself a great disservice when you indulge in that kind of ideology. Yes. Um, so talking about the new covenant, uh -huh. I have to tell people the new covenant is not what you think that the old covenant was done away. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, and I think I've said it before in times past that, Let's say you're married to a woman for several years. You both have an impasse in your marriage. You can't get along, whatever. You um, you get a divorce, mm -hmm. right? And there's a particular area in the marriage that's a stumbling block, and you guys can't overcome it. Both of you harden your heart. I don't want to see him no more. I don't want to see her no more. And you move on, mm -hmm. right? And let's say you don't get remarried, but you just stay apart. And then one day... Something happens to you, something happens to her, and you start thinking about it, and you're like, man, I had no idea this is what he was thinking. Man, I had no idea this is what she was thinking. Mm -hmm. This actually happened, we were talking about this last night, how a married couple were getting ready to make a big decision that was going to be detrimental to them, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And Yahweh showed me what the problem was. So I took the both of them. I put them in a room facing each other in a chair. I sat in the middle off to the side and I began questioning them. And as I questioned them, it finally started to come out that this one thought this is what this one wanted. Mm -hmm. That one thought 
this is what this one wanted. Mm -hmm. And they both came to the idea and they looked at each other and they said, I didn't know you didn't really want that. And the other one said, well, I didn't know that you really wanted that. Right, right. Right? So back to this marriage contract thing, the New Testament, the new contract. It's in his blood. But those two come back together and they say, I'm sorry. I apologize. I didn't realize I was wrong in how I was judging you. And the other one says, well, I'm sorry because I was the bigger idiot. I thought you thought like this and I didn't know that Mm -hmm. that was the case. And they get back together. Now, do they tear up the original contract? No. No. What changed? What changed was their heart changed. They had a different spirit. Mm -hmm. And so... The new covenant is a piece of paper that says you're going to be given a spirit that you didn't have before, where you have the capacity to fulfill the original contract. Uh And so I'm going to, it's called an addendum. Uh We're going to take the original paper contract and we're going to put this other paper behind it. We're going to staple it together and re-ratify this thing Mm -hmm. and call it a new covenant because we both have a different spirit now. And you got that different spirit and you got that change of heart because the understanding of something came along mm-hmm. of some knowledge that you didn't really have you thought you had but you, you didn't. didn't have it you were deceived. and now i got that not just the wisdom i got the understanding of it and now it changes my heart towards you because now i understand that you really do want me and this is what the theme is today of talking to the christian mm-hmm. You have been deceived in certain areas yes. about certain things. Mm-hmm. And I can understand why. And I'm not, we're not condemning anybody, as we said before. That's not right. the point. Mm-hmm. That's not the point. Um, and so you couldn't know any better. But through hearing what we're saying today, you're going to be held responsible. Mm-hmm. If you continue to entertain this video, mm-hmm. you're going to be held responsible mm-hmm. for what is said in this video, and we know it's going to cut your heart. Some people are going to get really ticked off, you know, and other people are going to have time, need time to sit and think about this. Uh, uh, just test the spirit. Test the spirit. If the scriptures we're bringing out don't convict you, mm-hmm. nothing's going to convict you. You're right. Then you got to <laughs> ask yourself, where are you truly? Do you really have the spirit of Messiah? Mm -hmm. Because these are his words. Old and New Testament is him. Uh, Do you really want to put on the full armor? Right. So in Jeremiah chapter 31, Mm -hmm. verse 31, it says, Behold, the days are coming, says Yahweh, when I will make a blood covenant by passing between two pieces of flesh, a new with freshness covenant that is between the cutting of the two pieces of flesh with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. Verse 32, not according to the covenant that is between the cutting of two pieces of flesh that I made with their fathers in the day I took them as to seize them with strength by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt. My covenant that is between the cutting of two pieces of flesh, which they broke, violated and disannulled. Mm -hmm. And this is what we got going on today. Uh Don't need to keep this. Mm -hmm. Though I was a husband to them, says Yahweh. Mm -hmm. Well, Yahshua is the husband to be to the bride to be. Mm -hmm. And Revelation says she's the one that has the testimony or the spirit of prophecy and Mm -hmm. keeps the The commandments. commandments. Mm -hmm. She's the only one. Yes. Okay. So it's still going on to this day. But this is the covenant that is between the cutting of two pieces of flesh in verse 33 that I will make as an alliance with the house of Israel after those days, says Yahweh. I will fasten and restore my law in their minds Mm -hmm. and write and engrave it on their hearts and their bowels and their inward parts, and I will be their Elohim and they shall be my people. Mm Mm-hmm. Bam, there it is. Mm-hmm. There it is. That is the essence of the new covenant. Yes. You can't do it on your own. Mm-hmm. He has to do it. Mm-hmm. All you got to do is say, okay, mm-hmm. I'm I'm willing. Right. Just like when a when a woman comes up to the altar to be married to the husband, the 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 the, the, the priest or whoever says, Do you say I do? You say, mm-hmm. I do. Mm-hmm. 
I do. That's all mm-hmm. you got to say. Mm-hmm. I'm given my carnal mind, mm-hmm. my corrupt heart, my will, my emotions over to you so that you can do in me what I can't do for myself. Mm-hmm. I'm tired of living like this. Mm-hmm. That's a choice. It's mm-hmm. a personal choice. So do you have something you want to say on that? Uh, until um, it's be, it, it gets taught that Judah was chosen to be the lawgiver and Jerusalem was chosen to be the place where the law came forth at from, you know? And it was supposed to go out into all the world, uh, uh, to the ends of the world. Uh, some um, translations um, st- stated, but we were cutting it off. And some 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 in some ways or many ways it's being cut off from Jerusalem the very Jerusalem mm-hmm. today mm-hmm. to come out and teach the nations mm-hmm. how to keep the commandments and yet they make alliances with the nations that they won't teach it to you and don't you try to teach nothing to them mm-hmm. and it's just easily that the enemy has got in between but we know Yahweh word is greater it's going to it's going to accomplish what is sent out to accomplish and just my hopes and prayer is that through these discussions it would reach that heart that stony heart and turn it into flesh man because this is serious business obedience you know yeah the good thing is that in the millennium Uh the law or the commandments will go out Mm-hmm. to the four corners of the earth. And it doesn't make any sense why Yahweh would establish his commandments, his marriage contract in the Old Testament, remove them during this dispensation of time just to reinstitute them again during the millennium and make the people who live during that period of time comply with it. Mm-mm. Why should you not have to comply with the same moral law right. today? Mm-hmm. It's oxymoronic. It doesn't right. make any sense. Right, right. And knocking on the door and he won't get in. <laughs> right. So one of the another points that Shaul is making is good works of his laws should be performed by Jew and converted Gentiles. Mm-hmm. Another point is Yahweh intends that we do good work. So we're revisiting uh, that concept here. In James chapter 2, verse 17 through 22, it says, Thus also faith, that is the moral conviction of a religious truth, which we'll say is the commandments to keep it simple Mm -hmm. by itself. If it does not have works, it is dead. dead. Mm -hmm. You Christians who think that you don't have to keep the commandments. Mm -hmm. You keep saying that your faith is dead Mm -hmm. because it has no works in that particular area of your life. Exactly. I'm not, we're not saying all areas of your life, Mm -hmm. just this one. This is what we're focused on today Mm -hmm. by ignoring and denouncing them. And diffusing them, as we read earlier, as Mm -hmm. Israel did. You're doing the same thing that Israel did. It's a spirit of unbelief. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Verse 18. But someone will say, you have faith that is in the moral conviction of a religious truth. But I have works. Mm -hmm. So, hey, Brother Anthony, you got faith, but I got works. Mm -hmm. So you got one thing, I got another, but we each don't have the opposite. Yeah, we right? don't have both. Right. As an occupation, show me your faith mm-hmm. that is the moral conviction of a religious truth without your works mm-hmm. of no oh, occupation, uh-huh. and I will show you my faith by what I do. Mm-hmm. How are you going to explain this away? Mm-hmm. Now, of course, we've got people out there that write off everything that Shaul says. Mm -hmm. And I can in part understand it because he speaks in a coded language. But you see, (laughs) this is the advantage that we have that we keep the commandments over the Christians who refuse those aspects of the commandments Mm -hmm. that they don't want to keep. And that is, if you keep the commandments, you'll understand why Paul says what he says. John. You can't you can't judge the man if you have no qualifications of understanding of lack of obedience in those areas because it can't teach you why he's saying what he's saying. Yes, yes, that's what it's you- like. Look, it, it's like this. I've known you for over twenty five years. Mm-hmm. You're my homie. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. 
if I sometimes I hear you say something that if I didn't know you, I say, oh man, oh that don't sound good. Uh huh. That don't sound good. But I know you like the back of my hand, mm -hmm. mostly. Mm -hmm. We don't truly know everybody right, all the right, way, right, right. but I know you pretty good, and I know your character enough. He had to have had a reason why he said that that way. Mm -hmm. And when I examine what I know Anthony believes, I can conclude this is the reason why he said it. Like now, you take... Uh, an observer who heard the same thing who don't know you, they're going to condemn you right away. Mm -hmm. But it's out of context because mm -hmm. you have no wisdom, no knowledge, no understanding of Anthony and what he believes so that you can put what he said in proper perspective and context. Mm -hmm. So you got to be real careful about how you judge what Paul is saying. Mm -hmm. You're speaking in opinions out of ignorance because mm -hmm. you're not obedient to what he was obedient to. Exactly. And even Peter wrote it as a warning in, in, in one of his letters uh, that Paul writings is hard and they're being twisted and risked. In other words, they've been twisted and ringed out to misunderstanding what he really is saying. Mm -hmm. And so if you don't know who Paul is, well, he told you he had to go to the Jew first, then to the Gentile. Mm -hmm. So he just didn't come to you to teach you something new. Mm -hmm. He came to you to teach you something that was already established mm -hmm. and that to let you know that you are part of it. So your faith as you walk under that umbrella don't complete you without these works. That faith is like in vain. You just say you got faith, but I can't see it because you being disobedient to every good work. Mm -hmm. The commandments is good. Right. And perfect and mm -hmm. holy. Paul mm -hmm. wrote that. Mm -hmm. And just. Mm -hmm. So why wouldn't you want to do them? And it's glorious. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, I have employees in my business and those employees know my value system, my mm -hmm. beliefs as far as how to run a business, our protocol, our process and so forth. And because they're fairly loyal to not breaking those things, mm -hmm. I can give them privileges. Like if they come to me and say, can I go do this or can I go do that? I say, go, mm -hmm. you know, and I'll even pay for them to do it. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, I'm talking about like a personal matter or something. Right. Because I know that they know and value mm -hmm. my beliefs and my 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 process of what I do here and not to cause any kind of trouble. So I can give them privileges that I could not give a regular person who doesn't know and doesn't respect what I say. Right. Or how things have to be. Mm -hmm. So they earn that. Mm -hmm. Well, the same is true with this. OK, Yahweh gives privileges to us and maybe lets things even slide when maybe he won't do that for another person who's completely disobedient. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, it's just this one thing, John. Uh, it's amazing how when Yeshua walked this um, earth, how he pre warned some of the things, the ideologies that would be um, taught and accepted by people you know um the gifts of the spirit that paul writes about a lot of them out there possess some of these gifts you understand but yeshua knew that they would be deceived by just having these gifts wrote a four time with paul he said um many gonna come to me and say mm -hmm. i did many good works mm -hmm. I cast out devils. That's scary to me. In your name, I did all of this stuff. In your name. And yet, he say, I never knew you. We talked about that on the first page. You know, that's got to be scary to you when you're hearing that you're rejecting his commandments. It's got to be scary. He's bringing you in saying he's bringing you into something, not making you something separate on your own. This thing was already established through Abraham. Right. He's bringing you into Abraham's household. Abraham was uncircumcised when Yahweh called him. 
but his obedience gave him the righteousness right. and the approval of Yahweh that made Yahweh consider him a friend because he obeyed him. Mm -hmm. That's faith. That's faith. That's supposed to be our father. Mm -hmm. How can you have a different father? The faith was established in Abraham. Right. So you got to have Abraham's faith. Mm -hmm. We got to have it. We got to have it. Uh, that scripture you brought up from the last time, if you if you really examine that verse, uh -huh. what is the stipulation that breaks and causes him to say what he says to them? You who practice Torahlessness, yes, anti commandment people, mm -hmm. you're running out there, you're slaying in the spirit, you're casting out demons, you're healing the sick. And all that, and you can glory in that all you want. And at, yet, at the end of the day, he's saying the one thing that nullified and wasted all of your time doing all that stuff is running in your own righteousness to claim you did those things mm -hmm. apart from being righteous, having the breastplate of righteousness of Yeshua who could teach you how to be obedient to the Father's will. We talked about that last time, mm -hmm. which is to keep his commandments. It's, I'm telling you, John. Not just what we talk it's a about. Process. Now. Yeah. This is a process. Mm -hmm. We 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 talk and we talk and I read and I read and I'm telling you, it's the same word is going forth. Yahweh spoke through the prophet Jeremiah and told him to go to Israel. He said, even if a prophet come to you and he prophesied to you and that thing come true. And yet, if that same prophet teach you that you don't have to keep his commandments, he say, don't you follow him. Mm -hmm. I have not spoken to him. I don't know him. But today, if they come and they prophesy good things to people, oh, they follow them. And yet they follow them to learn how not to keep the commandments based on something they prophesied to them in their life. And so that group of people that you spoke about mm -hmm. obviously were listening to some preacher telling them you don't need to keep the commandments. Exactly. And Yahshua was basically telling them, I'm setting the record straight. Mm -hmm. I don't never know you because you wouldn't do what I said. You were listening to a preacher or an evangelist telling you you ain't got to do what I told you already in my word, in my book, you're supposed to do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's so simple. It is. And yet people want to fight. All right, let's move on. Verse 19. Mm -hmm. um, you believe as to entrust your spiritual well-being that there is one Elohim. Mm -hmm. You do well. Mm -hmm. Even the demons believe and tremble and shudder with fear. Mm. But do you want to know, O oh foolish, filled with the emptiness of a man, that faith, that is the moral conviction of a religious truth without works, of no occupation mm -hmm. is dead as a corpse. Mm -mm. Was not Abraham our father justified and rendered innocent by works? Get that one. As an occupation, when he offered Isaac his son on the altar, mm -hmm. you had to go do something. You can't sit on your glorious wonder and, and think that you're going to get this without doing anything. Mm -hmm. You got to get up off the chair and go do something. Verse 22, do you see with a perception that faith, the moral conviction of religious truth, was working together? Mm -hmm. You can't have them separated. Mm -hmm. That process does not work. Mm -hmm. Working together to cooperate, so they're in cooperation with one another, mm -hmm. faith and works of the commandments working together was made perfect. Mm -hmm. To the point of completion of character. Yes. Mm -hmm. So what he's saying is if you refuse to do this, you cannot complete perfect righteous character in your life. Mm -hmm. Why are you wasting your time? It's the deception. Uh, it's one of the things May was telling me she had with her sister is that she was telling her about um, King Solomon and how he's quoted after all of his endeavors uh looking into this to find out this that all you had to do is fear god of 
and keep his commandments. Mm -hmm. And she says, her sister and says, that is a whole duty of mankind. Yeah, it's yeah. a different kind of fear with the Bible and then the fear that we have in the world. And I'm like, May, uh, I don't know or know the different kind of fear because if you can fear something in the world, why you can't, why you fear something of the world more than you would fear something of Yahweh? That becomes your Elohim. Yes. It's and idolatry. Said, so yeah. fear is fear. No matter who it is you are allowing it to be towards, it's still the same fear. You're shuddering, as you just said. You know, the demons are scared. Mm -hmm. The same one that you are casting out, they scared of that name. Mm -hmm. So why are you not afraid of it? Mm -hmm. Why are they not asking themselves this? Where do they get this? Um, because they've been so indoctrinated. High mindedness from. Okay. So the next section is you are part of the covenants. Mm -hmm. The Christian is supposed to be part of the covenants. Yes. Now we're in. going to get into where the rubber really starts to meet the road. Yes. Because what we're talking about here is growing to a fuller understanding mm -hmm. of who and what you are, as we talked about in the first part, um, so that you can begin to put on the full armor of Yahweh mm -hmm. so that you find yourself not lacking. So in verse 11, it says, therefore, remember that you once Gentiles in the flesh mm -hmm. who are called uncircumcision as an unregenerate person mm -hmm. by what is called the circumcision, the Jews made in the flesh by hands, that at that time you were without Mashiach being aliens as a non-participant from the commonwealth as a citizen of freedom of Israel and strangers from the covenants, a contracted will of promise, mm -hmm. having no hope and without Elohim in the world. We brought that out mm -hmm. in Hebrews mm -hmm. uh, last time. Yes. Verse 13. But now in Hamashiach, Yahshua, you who were once or far off have now been brought near by the blood of Hamashiach. Mm -hmm. Any comments you want to make? Uh, no, bas basically, um, I would encourage if somebody is just seeing this go to the first part first and follow and come up to this part you know and walk with us through this journey and Yahweh will open your eyes up to who you are and who you was created to be you know I don't care if you consider yourself an outsider, a stranger, a Jew, a Gentile. You will begin to see how he's bringing you into his body that you can even put on his name. You know, you, we can't pray in any other name but Yeshua's name. Mm -hmm. So you don't come to him and pray to him as a Gentile. You don't come to him and pray to him as a Jew. You have to pray to him in his name. Who is he? You know, he's one person. He's bringing us into that one body. And it's so easy to separate us through doctrines. Mm -hmm. In the beginning, he had to separate Adam and Eve in order to indoctrinate one of them so that they can go back and indoctrinate the other. Whose voice are you listening to? You know, and so as we journey through this page by page, walk with us. Hear what we're hearing. And just give yourself the right choice to see, do these words come from heaven or do they come from us? Right. So Shaul, one of his points is basically, I'm, I'm kind of summarizing, uh, we have the covenant of Abraham by faith. Uh -huh. That's why we're the seed of Abraham. Mm -hmm. Yahshua rebuked the Jews of his day mm -hmm. that, yes, you're the children of Abraham, but you're not the seed of Abraham because mm -hmm. you lack the faith. Right. When people will say, well, wait a minute, they kept the Torah. No, they didn't. Mm -hmm. Yahshua said they do not keep the law. Yeah. They keep their law mm -hmm. mixed with Moses. Mm-hmm as Shaul would talk about, mm -hmm. but they don't keep Yahweh's law. Mm -hmm. So they're mixing man's righteousness with Yahweh's righteousness. Mm -hmm. And you're coming out with a hybrid of righteousness. And that's, and when you do that, you can't have the true breastplate of righteousness of Yeshua on your chest, mm -hmm. covering your heart, protecting you 
from these other ideologies that would corrupt Yahweh's word. And, 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 and Shaul, the Apostle Paul, is always admonishing uh, the Gentiles that he's talking to about going back to see the faith of Abraham. That's where Yahweh converted him from, that faith. That's where Yahweh saw righteousness in him was through his faith in believing Yahweh and obeying Yahweh's word. He, there's no way he could have took Isaac to um, sacrifice Isaac without faith in believing that Yahweh had a certain power to fulfill the promise that he would give Abraham a seed, not just to take it away from him, but he would give him a seed and told him who the seed was going to be. Right. Um, one last point here. The renewed covenant is by grace in his blood. Mm -hmm. Without that blood, you have no grace. You have so no forgiveness either. No yeah. forgiveness. There is supposed to be no difference between us, mm -hmm. Jew or Israel and, and Gentile. For those who accept mm -hmm. uh, what we're talking about, there's not any difference. You know, I'm from Judah. You know, I don't know where you're from. Maybe mm -hmm. you have Israeli blood. Mm -hmm. It don't matter. We know we got the same blood now in the Messiah. Yeah, that's all that matters. Uh, verse 14, for he himself is our peace who has made us both one and has broken down the middle wall, an enclosed barrier of separation, a fence as a partition. Now, we're going to get into something interesting here that addresses what he's saying. Mm -hmm. Having abolished, in verse 15, rendered useless in his flesh the hatred of hostility, mm -hmm. the enmity of hostility towards the law of commandments contained in ordinances, whether civil, ceremonial, or ecclesiastical. So if a priest tells you this is how you got to handle a thing, mm -hmm. you need to be able to do that. So as to create in himself one new man from the two, thus making peace, and that he might reconcile them both to Elohim in one body through the cross, thereby putting to death the enmity of hostility. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're dealing with. People may not quite realize it, but if they really stop down and stop and be honest with themselves, why do I resist so much keeping the first four commandments? Mm -hmm. This is telling you it's hostility. Yes. There's an enmity about this middle wall. And we're going to get into what this middle wall is. And that middle wall is a barrier that prevents you. It's, it's a physical wall, mm -hmm. but it's also a metaphorical wall in your life. Mm -hmm. you got a wall in your heart that mm -hmm. you're saying, I'm not willing to go through the gate through that wall mm -hmm. to get to where i got to go to the next level. I don't have to go through I don't have to go yes. through that. Mm -hmm. I can stay where I, I am. I can get through there and the way I'm going. So here... One of the things that Paul is talking about is the middle wall and gate is now broken down. Mm -hmm. He did it. You have free access. Mm -hmm. You can decide to walk right through if you mm -hmm. want to, mm -hmm. but many don't. Another point is he took away the hatred. Why do you still continue in it? Mm -hmm. This is something for people to think about. That, that's really deep right there, John, because you could think, Jacob, all of those were his sons, but they had different mothers. Mm. And it brought so much hatred between them and their brothers mm -hmm. that they sold one off into slavery. Yep. It brought that kind of hatred when the whole concept was to make them one. Don't we all have one father? Yet yeah, he's the one that he, saved them uh -huh. from the family. Uh huh. Yeah. And yet, he was the one that they was most jealous of. Mm -hmm. And today, the Messiah is the one they most jealous of. Mm -hmm. So they teach you other ones. Mm -hmm. They teach you about other messiahs who saying stuff that this one didn't really say. Right. Who seeing stuff that this one didn't really see. Joseph saw dreams. Mm -hmm. huh? And nobody didn't want to hear it. Take heed to nothing coming out of Joseph's mouth. Who <laughs> wanted to listen to Yeshua when he came? Mm-hmm. 
The same thing they sought to do with Joseph, they sought to do with the Messiah. Yet, Joseph lived and the Messiah lives. Hmm? They threw him in a pit to kill him. Yet, Yahweh raised him up. It's a type of Messiah. Yeah. It's, it's just a man this process that he walks us through to show us his works and yet we say we don't need works yet Yahweh working six days a week mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> <laughs> remember the seventh six day. I, I'm yeah. assuming you're still working five days six days a week yeah. and resting on the seventh he, he's resting now yeah but he's working yeah on souls yeah right Righteous work, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, another point is the Holy Spirit can reveal the truth if you allow it. Yes. If you allow it. Mm -hmm. that's, that's key. So in, in 2 Corinthians uh, 2, um, kind of messed up here. 11 through 16. 12 through 16. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Uh, now, we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from Yahweh, that we might know the things that have been freely a grant by favor and kindness given to us by Yahweh. These things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual that are supernatural things with the spiritual. Verse 14, but the natural, which is the lower bestial nature of man, does not receive or accept the things of the Spirit of Yahweh, for they are foolishness and absurd to him, nor can he know them because he, they are spiritually discerned through investigation. Mm -hmm. But he who is spiritual as non-carnal judges through investigation all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. For who has the mind, divine thought of the master, that he may instruct them? But we have the mind, divine thought of the Messiah. Mm -hmm. So that speaks again back to what we were saying, is that if you're not going to keep, you're going to cherry pick different commandments that you're not going to keep, mm -hmm. then those areas of spiritual knowledge and understanding and wisdom is cut off. Mm -hmm. And you're going to be in a state of ignorance in that particular area of your life for the rest of your life if that's what you choose. Mm -hmm. That's just what the Word says. And if you don't believe that and you want to write it off, then you're not part of Messiah. Yes. And you're actively an anti-Messiah because you're against his spirit of truth that's trying to tell you in these words what he's saying, and you're brushing it off and saying it's not for me. Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. then it's not for you. Mm hmm is the conclusion. And it should be, this right here should be an alarm of what kind of yeah. spirit dwells right. in you if it's hostile. You, know, you use the uh, translation bestial. That's like barbaric spirit. You animal. Know? Yeah. So like a wild I'm animal. I'm fighting you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take over that spirit and I'm going to take your, your body hostage. Mm -hmm. You know, why that's not sending off alarm systems in us that don't use this excuse. A lot of them like to use this power said I would do what I would do and I couldn't do it, but I want to do it. And I realized that I'm nothing but a sinner. No, Paul had a spirit of strength and he's telling you how to identify the hostility that's in you so that the commandments can rightly come in and judge it that you can give it over to the Messiah. Mm hmm to cast it out of you, to bring you into obedience to the will of Yahweh. But we won't allow this little hungry flesh and its natural desires to be chastised. Mm -hmm. So we let it fulfill this lustful desires as you start out in the beginning of this here. You know, how we seek, we were once like those but now we're not like that anymore we've been called out of it so alarms should be going off and we examining ourselves what manner of person are we are we walking in his will that's it yep okay so we're going to take a look at this uh this picture of 
well, we're using Herod's temple as, as an example. Um, but we talked about a process. Mm -hmm. You know, you were mentioning about a process, and we're kind of going through that. But I want to give a picture now of this process mm -hmm. rather than just speaking only and letting people try to conceptualize that idea. So what we have here is we have the picture of the temple, and you can clearly see in the yellow here to the left, court of the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. And it's a big court. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then what we see next is when you come actually into the temple sanctuary part itself, um, you have what's called the beautiful gate. Mm -hmm. Now, for me, the beautiful gate basically kind of means, it, I'm sure it means other things, but one thing I want to point out is when a Gentile sees Israel and he sees the glorious works of Yahweh through Israel, mm -hmm. He's not doing it through the Gentiles. He's doing it through Israel. Mm -hmm. We need to get that process and that protocol straight. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we know that we have the heavenly patterns mm -hmm. that's up there. This pattern is up there mm -hmm. that don't change mm -hmm. and has been brought down here for us to see in this natural realm so we can perceive and understand this. Mm -hmm. So the beautiful gate for me is when a Gentile sees Israel has this power mm -hmm. from Yahweh that he's watching them. He's taking care of them. He's giving them victory. They got no diseases. They got prosperity. They got peace. They got all this stuff going on. And the Gentile says, I want to join with them. Well, that's a beautiful thing because that's what Yahweh has always wanted is to bring the Gentiles in. Mm -hmm. But you got to go through these gates now. So you go through the beautiful gate. Because it's a beautiful thing that a Gentile can conceptualize this idea, and he wants a part of it, just like the Egyptians did when Israel was getting ready to leave out of Egypt. Mm -hmm. They joined themselves. So now you come in to this first court here, or second court, I should say. It's called the court of the woman. Mm -hmm. So women of Israel who are in their impure state mm -hmm. have to be in this part of the court. Mm -hmm. They can't go further than that, mm -hmm. okay? So Gentiles and uh, have to go into that part of the court and they have to remain there, even though they've made a decision that they want to go and be a part of Israel. OK, you made the first step. There's mm -hmm. a process. There's a protocol. And, and I'm going to bring this home into the present day. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. This idea that once. I've accepted Jesus, it's all over, mm -hmm. is nonsense. Mm -hmm. Your life is a series of events that are going to bring you from faith to faith and glory to glory mm -hmm. if you allow it. Mm -hmm. If you don't allow it, you're going to stay in this one court, mm -hmm. and you're not going anywhere. And we're going to touch on what happens with that, okay, because that's interesting. So you're going to stay with in the impure section because mm -hmm. you haven't been circumcised yet. Mm -hmm. OK, you may have accepted the idea, but you're not circumcised yet. Mm -hmm. In this area, the Gentiles are going to be schooled. OK, this is kind of like in Revelation when it talks the bride to be the woman who flees into the wilderness. She's being held in a place of confinement where she can be nourished for three and a half years mm -hmm. so that Messiah can bring her into full conformity of what he wants in the marriage contract mm -hmm. and put the white gown on her so she can marry him. So she'll be able to go through these other gates right into the father's quarters mm -hmm. and be presented to the father to marry the son. Mm -hmm. You ain't just walking straight in there. Mm -mm. That ain't going to happen. So these Gentiles, I'll say now Christians, mm -hmm. are in this court with the woman. Mm -hmm. For those who have decided, I want to keep the commandments and be joined to Israel. Mm -hmm. Not a church, mm -hmm. Israel. Mm -hmm. Not Israel according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. I need to be mm -hmm. careful about that. Mm -hmm. On the, If you look up now to the, the first top box, it says court of the Israel and the priest. Mm -hmm. You see that yellow gate there? Uh -huh. That's the middle wall and the middle, the gate that Yahshua said he tore down. Uh -huh. He tore that, the temple has a gate mm -hmm. because in them days you had to go through this process. Mm -hmm. But what he's saying now, if you accept me, 
and you keep my commandments, you have life. And you can go straight in and be a part of Israel because mm -hmm. that wall is gone now. It's mm -hmm. like looking at this without a wall, and on the other side of that wall is Israel. Mm -hmm. You are part of them. Mm -hmm. And after that, you can present yourself before the Son and the Father. Mm -hmm. Because you got now, you don't have a little bit of priesthood you're subjected to because you're now becoming a part of the Melchizedian priesthood mm -hmm. of which you're being grafted into because you're accepting the whole kit and caboodle. Mm -hmm. You're not accept piecemealing, I'll take this, I'll take that, I'll get rid of this, I'll get rid of that. Mm -hmm. None of that. You're going to stay in that court. So that's a picture of what happens when you go through this process mm -hmm. is you're going through a series of gates that allows you permission, if you accept it, to go beyond that. Did mm -hmm. you have anything you want to say about no, it? No, no. Oh, nothing. All right. So here's a top view so that you can see this. So again, here's the beautiful gate on the right side that a Gentile has to come through that. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then you have the court of the woman where the Gentile would stay. And I would say, spiritually speaking, this is where Christianity is right now. Because mm -hmm. they're saying, I'll keep six commandments but I won't keep 10, just mm -hmm. to keep it simple, mm -hmm. right? Until you decide that you're going to get in compliance and keep all 10, you can't go through this middle wall here of division. That's a middle wall of hatred mm -hmm. because I guarantee you, people that are sitting in this court of the woman who are stubborn and arrogant saying, I want to do it this my way. Mm -hmm. I want to keep what I want to keep and still have the benefits. Well, that's a form of hatred that Paul says, for the Gentiles not to speak against the natural olive tree. Mm -hmm. They support you. You don't support them. Mm -hmm. And if you're not careful, I'm going to break your branch off so that you can't be a part of Israel. Mm -hmm. And you'll be cast out of all these courts. Mm -hmm. Okay? So this middle wall here represents division, which Joshua said he tore down. Mm -hmm. So that there cannot be a hatred between Israel and and the Gentiles, mm -hmm. but yet it's still there to it's this there. day. Mm -hmm. It's there not because Joshua didn't tear it down. It's there because that gate is in your heart. Mm -hmm. That gate in your heart, ha that hatred is preventing you from becoming a part of Israel because you won't keep the commandments. Mm -hmm. This is the shadow picture of this. This is the heavenly pattern. Mm -hmm. So I want to show you another picture here. From another perspective, this is one of the biggest courts. Mm -hmm. Aside from the court of the Gentiles on the other side of this wall, this is the court where they would be. And so I want people to see this to get a picture in their mind about what this process is. Because ultimately, what this comes down to is Yahweh is one. He's a cod. The Father and the Son are mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. He wants... Israel to be at one with him. Mm -hmm. He wants the Gentiles to come in through Israel, that we all have the same mind, like you mm -hmm. said earlier, mm -hmm. that we're not divided against ourselves mm -hmm. one to another. Mm -hmm. We all have one law for the native born and the foreigner who comes along with us. Mm -hmm. And so that when we get into the kingdom, once we're all one, then we can come into the Father and the Son. Mm -hmm. That's we're going to cover that a little bit as we go along. So one of the you want to say something? No, go ahead. Still no. Okay. Um, can I offer you something? <laughs> so you say something? You, I don't want to be the only one talking. You, you're feeding me now. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> I'll take it. Uh, so one of the points that just break in now, uh -huh. whatever I'm saying, uh -huh. if you feel like you need to. Uh, one of the points that Shaul is saying. It is him alone that creates the good works in us before we're even born. Think about that. Mm -hmm. Before you were even born, Yahweh spoke into your spirit when he formed your spirit up in heaven to be placed into your mother's womb. And he predestined you to do these good works. Mm -hmm. You may not know it yet. I know that when I came, to, before I came to the faith, I didn't know nothing about this. I could care less. Uh and, and nature itself teaches you because you get this conviction every time you do something wrong, whether you knew it was wrong or not. Mm -hmm. But it's just something inside of you uh, 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 convicts you that something just happened that shouldn't have happened. Mm -hmm. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. You know, I don't care if it's physically 
alerts you, but on the inside, you're saying, I shouldn't have touched that hot stove. Mm. I shouldn't have put my hand in that fire, you know? Uh, if I had to walk through some broken glass, I should have swept it up before I tried to walk through it. Mm-hmm. Something on the inside is going to tell you. Uh, a lot of sayings that we used to come up with, uh, you say, like you say, we're supposed to have the mind of the Messiah. And it's sayings, and I probably still, I don't say it today, but I know I said it. Uh, I should have followed my first mind. Mm. Well, how many minds do you have? <laughs> You know, and so we we gravitate to yeah. all these sayings, not knowing that the nature in you is sinful, but it's also a spiritual part in there that yearns to do good. Paul is talking about mm-hmm. that in Romans mm-hmm. seven. It's in there. But if you're not able to identify that war, you're not going to be able to have to put on the armor to fight this war. Mm hmm. And to be able to come in as you're presenting into the holy into the holy place and be one. Not gonna be able to do it if you don't begin to discern these things that's going on inside you and call sin out for what it is. You ever been to a concert that you really were looking forward to mm-hmm. and uh you couldn't get good seats? Let's say you're up in the nosebleed. Uh, yeah. And you're looking down at all these people that paid three, four, five hundred, a thousand dollars, whatever, and they're in that front section, mm-hmm. and these look like ants on the stage, you know. Uh-huh. And you're sitting there and you're saying to yourself, Man, I wish I would have bought these tickets earlier. Not that I would pay that kind of money for that, but mm-hmm. I'm just making an example. So I could be down there close to see everything's going on. These people are privileged. Mm-hmm. Now, show going back to these illustrations I showed about the courts. Can you imagine being a Gentile or Christian or some other religious faith that decided to want to come into Israel, but you're not quite fully committed yet, you haven't been fully circumcised, and you're standing in there and you're watching people of Israel who are qualified going into that part of the temple, and all you can do is just sit there and watch them, saying, I wish I could be in there with them and go with them, but doggone it, I just can't bring myself to be compliant. Even even <laughs> the, uh, just the reply on that, what I, I relate to the concert part. When I first was able to start going to concerts, I didn't know it was a, a higher price you pay to get there. I'm thinking the oh, earlier you general, get there, you can mission run the on up there, right? All, yeah. and, <laughs> and just think the sacrifice that they had to make to get to that place. And we got to be looking at the same way. What kind of sacrifice I need to make in order to get there where the rest of mm-hmm. them are? How do I get into Israel? Mm-hmm. What is my sacrifice? Yeshua is showing you the way in. Right. He's the way. Right. He's the true way. And the life. Yeah. And so just going on the analogy you just get, that's how I can relate to it. Because once, like even today, if we want to go somewhere, uh, if we go to a a football game, a a Miami Heat basketball game, I'm telling me, I'm not buying those seats way up there. If we go on, we getting the seats down on the floor (laughs) and I pay the price, but I got to go and make up the money. Yeah. That's a a sacrifice. Yeah. That's work. So yeah. Isn't it works? That's works. Yeah. So, so uh, that's how I can relate to what you're saying, because we have to be able to be this living sacrifice. He's telling us this in his writings. Listen to what he's saying. Don't separate Paul and make him a Gentile. Right. He's not, a no, 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 not at all. He's coming to teach you a way that even him as being Israel, an Israelite, a Benjamin, he mm-hmm. said, but he was an Israelite. Was angel, yeah. So he's teaching you the true ways through faith, how to get to be a part and one with him. That's why he labored his life. He suffered that you can get this information. Mm-hmm. He was outcasted so that you can get this inf- information and have the instructions to include you and right. not exclude you. Right. Are you on fire yet? Not yet. Not yet. I'm uh-uh. Just getting warmed up, huh? No, you got me on fire. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm 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 thinking about this. I'm like, I'm saying to the people out there, what do you got to lose? Mm-hmm. If you've already tried it the other way. And it ain't working for you. 
usually my philosophy is if I'm heading east or I'm heading west looking for a sunrise, eventually you're going to find out there's something wrong with that philosophy. Uh -huh. You're not getting to where your goal is. Mm -hmm. You know, Trump would say, Vote for me. What do you got to lose? <laughs> you already tried the other guys, you know? Uh -huh. So you got nothing left. Give me a shot, you know? Yeah. But you have to be of the spirit to be able to do that. Uh, next point, uh, Shaul says, is tell them to remember what they were before they are being called by Yahweh when they were not a part of Israel. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want you to forget that right. because that's a point of orientation. This is what I was this is what I am. And this is the whole point of this series about showing you who you're supposed to be and what you're supposed to become over a period of time. Mm -hmm. Another point, now they are near because of the blood. Mm -hmm. It's the blood that brought you here, not you. Mm -hmm. it, and you were predestined mm -hmm. for this, as we read earlier. It is Yahshua that bridged the gap between Israel and Gentiles in their disagreements. Mm -hmm. And that's a really a whole nother uh, video. Mm -hmm. We're not going to get into that. Yahshua, in his fleshly sacrifice, took away the hatred for the law mm -hmm. so that Israel and Gentiles can obey. Both, mm -hmm. not, mm -hmm. not just one. This sacrifice made them into one body in him. Another point, this sacrifice allowed him to preach peace to both sides to agree to keep the law. Mm-hmm. It is through him that we both have access to the Father to receive his character when we are obedient. Uh, John, it's like, okay, uh, Yeshua's sacrifice. Why is this hatred for the law? What is this hatred? You know, um, a lot of people teach the free will thing, but um, Paul teaches us that you never have a free will you in, in the sense that you can do what you want to do because whomever you yielding yourself up to you be, you they serve mm -hmm. whether it's unrighteous or righteous right you serving some you right. somebody serving right Always. you're never the head yeah you're never making any decisions on your own you are you obeying somebody's Instructions. At best, you have delegated authority. Yes. But you're still under somebody. You'll never be above Yahweh. No. And you'll never be above Satan. Mm -hmm. So you just pick and choose who you want to serve. Well, that's interesting. The next point he makes is moving forward. <laughs> the Ephesians are under the delegated authority mm -hmm. of the power of the apostles. Mm -hmm. So that whatever they had, they've delegated to us. Mm -hmm. So let's go to the next section now, which is one law for both the native born and the Gentile. Verse mm -hmm. 17, and he came and preached peace to you who are far off and those who are near. Mm -hmm. For through him, we both have access to uh, by one spirit to the father. Now, th therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners as a resident alien. Mm -hmm. Okay, that goes back to that court of the woman again. Mm -hmm. When you're in that court, you're a resident alien. Mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're trying to cross over, but you're not really there yet. OK, but you're living in the land, so mm -hmm. to speak. Right. But fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household. So you made it through that middle wall of division. That's that middle gate. Yahshua says broad is the way that leads to destruction. But narrow is that gate mm -hmm. in the middle of the temple that you walk through, that you receive life. Mm -hmm. And there are a few that find it. Mm -hmm. So. Um. Members of the household as a family relative of Elohim, verse 20. Having been built on the foundation of the apostles, that is an ambassador for the gospel with miraculous powers and prophets, Yahshua HaMashiach himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom the whole building fitted together grows and enlarges into a holy temple of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want everybody in the outer court. He doesn't mm -hmm. want everybody in the court of the woman. He wants everybody in one court with Israel so that she can go into the sanctuary or into the Holy of Holies. Mm -hmm. But you got to be qualified to get in there. Even the priesthood only had high priests that could go in there, but a regular priest couldn't. Mm -hmm. You got to be qualified in the right lineage to be able to do that. It's hard to teach it in this world that we live in, no matter if it's the United States or any country, it's hard to teach it because we have been separated 
from birth, according to uh, your richness, your popularity. Right. They separate you right. here. Mm -hmm. And so your position is always lower than somebody else on. And somebody is always seeking to be at the highest position. Mm -hmm. And they delegate who's going to be up under them. Right. Yahweh delegation is you might have different offices or different duties or responsibilities, but you're all one. One family. Right. You're all one. Right. And, and you Paul all think alike. Say, born or free, mm -hmm. you're one. Male, female, you one and the Messiah. Right. You're one. You might have different responsibilities now. You know, the wife got to do her duties, the mm -hmm. husband got to do, but you're one. Right. Everything Fighting about Yahweh the same is one. Common goal. Yeah. yeah. Everything is one. We I don't treat you no lesser than I treat myself. Mm -hmm. That's the goal of Yahweh to bring us in. Do but not compare living, yourselves right. among yourselves. You you got mm -hmm. this picture in this mirror that the world has gave us, and so we do it. Even the preachers and the ones that call themselves the various titles of apostles, they got themselves at a level of not being a servant. Mm -hmm. Everything flowing to them right. and everybody is buying. But Peter and Paul them say, get up off your knees. I'm just a man like yeah, you. Right. Mm -hmm. We got to get the we got to get the true teaching that they're trying to teach. Well, us. That's a sign. We're not Ecod. We're not right, one right right now. But that's going to end. Uh, verse 22. In whom you also being built by construction together for a dwelling place of Elohim in the spirit. Mm -hmm. So in summary of this. Um, Shaul reminds them in their past sins that they were forgiven. So in Exodus chapter 12, verse 48 through 49, it says, And the stranger, a guest who is an alien, dwells with you and wants to keep the Passover to Yahweh. Let all his males be circumcised and let him come near and keep it. And he shall be as a native in the land, for no uncircumcised person shall eat it. Hmm. So he was able, in this case, granted to go through the middle wall of division and be a part of Israel mm -hmm. so he could keep it with them. Right. Verse 49. One united law shall be for the native born and mm -hmm. for the stranger, a guest who is an alien who dwells among you. No difference. One other point Shaul was trying to make. Finally, this is for building a temple out of believers for the Holy Spirit to live in. I think I already said that. Mm -hmm. The next point is the Father in the end time becomes the temple. We all enter when it's all complete. Mm -hmm. See, that's the end result. And this has always been a question to me for many years. And I think recently I finally, I think I've been able to encapsulate the concept anyway of what's going mm -hmm. on. Um, but let's read first before we actually get into this. And then we're going to close this out. In Revelation chapter 21, it says, But I saw no temple that was Yahweh's dwelling place not being in it. Mm -hmm. So this temple we talked about last time, how the 144,000, the 12 tribes of Israel, are the walls of the temple with their gates and the apostles being the foundation stones of the temple and all this stuff. It's all gone. Mm -hmm. Where did they go? Where did they go? And for the rest of us, where are we? You know, mm -hmm. we're now this is on the earth. Now, this mm -hmm. one this is when it's all about said and done mm -hmm. after the last great day of the feast of Sukkot. Um, not being in it for the master and supreme divinity almighty, which is the father. Mm -hmm. The all ruling universal so sovereign Elohim and the lamb lamb are its temple and dwelling place. Mm -hmm. Remember in John, Yahshua said. I am in you, you are in me, and we yeah, are in yeah, the yeah. Father. Mm -hmm. That always puzzled me at Passover when we read it every mm -hmm. year. What in the world? I mean, I kind of understood it, but this makes me understand it even more. Mm -hmm. Because what he's saying is, after everybody's been saved and converted to spirit, you know, composed of spirit, and there's no more physical anymore, at the end of this whole thing, when the heavenly Jerusalem comes down to earth, the temple is done away, and we all enter into the Father and the Son, and we dwell inside of Him, mm -hmm. which is where we came from in the first place. Mm -hmm. We all go back. How do we do that? How does maybe trillions of human beings in the whole course of humanity, 
become spirit beings and enter back into the bosom of the Father and the Son and live inside there. Does that become a whole nother universe mm -hmm. in itself? A mm -hmm. whole city? Mm -hmm. A whole world inside of itself that's a different dimension than this outside one we live in now? Mm -hmm. Think about it. That's crazy. It's wild. Mm -hmm. But that's the implication of what it's saying. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16, it says, Do you not know that you are the temple to dwell as a sacred place of Yahweh and that the spirit of Yahweh dwells in our house and cohabits in you? Mm -hmm. So the whole goal is to make us and to, to bring us to a temple, go through those courts until we get to the conclusion, hopefully becoming part of the Malchizedian priesthood, where you have full authority and you lack nothing, okay? Which is about this pull, putting on the whole armor that we're in now. When mm -hmm. we're in there, we're not going to have to worry about that because we already qualified, okay? But once you've gone through all those courts and have qualified to be a Melchizedekian priest in that kingdom, you have in the process become a temple yourself where Yahweh's spirit has come to live inside you and has begun to equip you with all the stuff that Yahshua had, Jesus had, so that you can be armored like he was, so the devil couldn't defeat you, and you persevered to whatever level you persevered. And once all these temples have now been composed of spirit and have gone to the heavenly Jerusalem, once all that plan is completed and there's nothing left to complete, that temple, with all its people in it and the city, all go inside the Father and Son, and we now live inside there. Mm -hmm. We don't. It doesn't appear we're going to be out here anymore. Mm -hmm. There could still be a universe, stars, galaxies, planets, whatever, but there seems to be nothing in Scripture that says we're going to come back out of the Father and go back out there. Mm -hmm. Instead, we live inside of Him, and we're nourished by Him, and we live in eternal peace, and we be like Him. We are sons of Elohim. We're sons of Elohim, sons of the Torah, fully completed in character, as we read before. Mm -hmm. That's all I got to say. Yes, that's, all you say. that's all I got to say. <laughs> Unless you provoke me into something. I'm, I'm going to try not provoke to. You, not, you uh, might, but I'm going to stay quiet. I, I, no, you want to try. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to see how that works. Uh -huh. Hey, uh, I'm just sitting here and I'm listening about the temple, you know, and the picture that you designed of Herod's temple and then the temple that's up the New Jerusalem. And the last verse you just about we being the temple and that he dwells in us. And you ask the question, well, how can all these make, well, how can so great of a Yahweh who is bigger than the whole universe mm -hmm. dwell in us. And he's dwelling in us and making us a temple to form a temple in him. And all of us are coming together to fit this building together. That's his, that's what his work that he's doing. And those that's going to believe and have the faith. And I was thinking about the forgiveness you know, when I ask for forgiveness and things pop up later after I've forgiven us and right away it speaks to my mind uh, that just the consequences of that sin that you did. But I already been forgiven for that sin. So if it's anything that I'm suffering because of that sin, that's fine. But I've been forgiven. I've been redeemed. I don't have to live in that sin having any more power over me. And so it's kind of difficult for us to process the forgiveness of Yahweh and the wiping away of a sin because we still relate things we've done in the past to events that happened to us after we passed through all of that stuff and not able to move on to the next phase or to the next court that we can get in to the holy place and become one with him because we're not re really receiving the grace. Mm. We're staying captive or uh, in bondage to the uh, consequences 
of a sin that he's already delivered us from. We don't have to go back in bondage into it. I wrestled, I'm thinking this morning before I came, the 27 years at Publix of being in a type of bondage mm. and living a sanctified, uh, separated life and being challenged every day I walk out to remember who I am. And because every uh, oppressed thought that came upon some leader mind within that company, I felt that was my punishment mm. for the things I done in my past life. But Yahweh was just showing me the, the beast, that was the translation, nature of man. <clears throat> To, to um consume you when you walk in, in this humil this humble spirit, when you are being uh, a servant of Yahweh to be obedient and take the strikes that Yeshua, feel the pain that Yeshua suffered for you, that you can really have some thankfulness mm. for what was done for you to get you to be able to take this because you know in time past you'd have been a certain different kind of character with these people mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so you have to see the process we have to see the process in which Yahweh is raising us up to fit into his kingdom mm -hmm. that's the whole point and this is just a, to me I'm calling them pages you know, but this is like a second step mm -hmm. that we're taking into seeing the complete person that Yahweh is trying to make within us that we can hold on. But without his commandments, without his law, we going to be that disobedient person that mm -hmm. remains outside. Never getting a chance to come inside, but wishing we was there. So I live in the hopes when anybody tell me that, don't worry about it, you already in. I gravitate to that so that I can stay weak. But I need some strength in me. Where is it, where is it gonna come from? Mm -hmm. If I can't walk in obedience, mm -hmm. I need his spirit, his to be my strength. Mm -hmm. Greater is he that's in me mm -hmm. than this part in the world. Mm -hmm. Cause this part is subject. But that one in there, like you say, he's subject to nobody. He ain't got the answer to nobody. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just thankful, you know, to sit here and watch my journey where he's bought me to sit in this very chair today and say, I'm still bringing you. Just keep coming. Don't stop. Somebody's fighting to get out of, out of some type of bondage. Don't stop. Keep fighting. But you can't fight without the spirit or the word of Yahweh. You need that to be your weapon. Hmm. The sword of the spirit, the breastplate of righteousness, the helmet, the shoes, everything that you need to show you the way is in here, mm -hmm. in him. Right. It's all in him. And we trying to put it on. Let's put it on. But it got to come from the inside first. Mm -hmm. Your heart. So I praise him. I'm thankful. I exalt him as always. He's, he's forever to be glorified in my heart. And I continue and pray his strength in me that he just keep me ready no matter what comes upon me. No matter what lies ahead that I remain faithful and continue to seek after him and him only. And I just bless him. Baruch Hashem. Well, brother, I know you tried, mm -hmm. but I told you I was going to stick to my promise and not let you lure <laughs> me into, uh, I'm going to let you have the final word. <laughs> you deserve it. Um, so we just want to thank everybody for watching today. And we hope this was meat to your soul and that will help you to understand better mm -hmm. who you're supposed to be, what you're supposed to become. And um, don't let your disobedience weaken your armor. So until the next time, shalom, peace.